Hello and happy Friday. Um, lots of updates for you so far this week. Um, it was a holiday on Monday, but Tuesday um, we were in Fargo helping with the Fargo Friends Moving Forward self-advocacy meeting. Um, and John and Angie, council members of ours, led a really great conversation about um, how they use their voice in their own life, how they've um, made decisions, how they've helped work with their team and their guardians to, you know, get where, to where they are in their life. And um, John talked a lot about that. And Angie talked about how to share your story at legislative session with legislators, kind of her whole experience with that. Um, I will also attach a video from them talking about that um, session they led. It was wonderful. And, um, one of the leaders at Friendship was there, the residential um, supervisors, and told me and John and Angie afterwards that that session was the most impactful training we've ever done, just hearing from John and Angie themselves. So thank you to our council members that are so gifted in sharing their story. And it was it was really great. And not to mention they pivoted um, as kind of the lead speakers because Patrick Kirby was going to lead that session and he got double booked. So they just stepped up and we're great. We're, we're better and as good as Patrick and even more so because that lived experience. So thank you very much. Um, our aging and disability federal grant that got accepted um, by ACL, we have a kickoff meeting next week to hear about, um, or I do with them to hear about our grant application, what they would like to see us do, how to kick off the trainings, um, and kind of a mentoring session to then start meeting with our group. So if you'd like to see that application again, I can send it out, but we're really excited. It's about um, people with disabilities as they age and what home and community-based services are out there in our state and really um, creating a state task force to talk about what to expect, what we can do better, partners across all areas. So it's gonna be really great, I think. Um, we then Wednesday had our self-advocacy group in Minot met, and thanks to Lori and staff at NDCPD, because um, Kyle is also going to help um, take team and mentor that group and lead training sessions. So we have a six-month plan with them of what to do with growing their board, stepping up in leadership positions, goal setting, that kind of thing. So very thankful to um, you know, our DD network partner for helping us with that lift too in that group. And they're really excited. They've got around 20 people right now coming um, and they're just ready to go. So it's really fun. Um, we are working on, John and Chaz are working on supported decision-making, um, making some videos we recorded with self-advocates to shorten those up, make some Canva posts using that for upcoming work um, on getting the word out about the importance of supported decision making. So that's coming. Um, I have been attending um, the economic assistance paperwork redesign meetings. Um, I've been really learning a lot and listening a lot to the people that um, are in that world with um, the folks they work with to get services like TANF and SNAP and your benefits and all of that. So they're redesigning the notices to make them user friendly user meaning the person with a disability or a family member when you're signing up for these things or you're um, you know reauthorizing making this plain language and easier where we are coming in is next week um, I have set it up with four individuals locally in Bismarck here to meet with the Deloitte team um, over a five-hour period where each person is going to go into an account like they're applying for all of these benefits and giving live feedback with the team of what's understandable to them, what's not working for them. Can you see the screen? Can you read the print? Um, all of that. So we are doing live demonstrations next week. Um, Trevor volunteered, JC, Colin, um, and Darcy are all volunteering to help us with that. So that's really cool. I'm excited that they get to give that live feedback as an end user of someone who is actually going to go apply for that. So it's great. Um, our SOGI data, I don't know if I've talked a lot about it, but the federal government um, in the last year or so has required us to take more data on um, SOGI, sexual orientation and gender identity from people who participate in our projects. Um, we have questions to ask. We've been asking those questions last year. We got We have some numbers on that. But just really, I'm trying to work through with all of our new grantees 
um, and just explaining why we have to collect that because um, like the peer-to-peer -peer middle school project that they just had an inclusive event, they didn't want to ask middle school kids that question. So we kind of had to w walk through why it's important, why the government wants it. I guess I just wanted you to be aware it is a requirement of ours. And I am, I'm trying to explain to people, um, it's not for identifying or outing somebody, um, but the government really wants to look more into people who have disabilities who could be further marginalized because of those things. And it was a, a presidential requirement that all these programs have to do it. So it's, it's fine, but I just thought I would mention that that's something further we are doing and trying to explain why. And we are getting more training on on this data from ACL and with our ITAC Help Center on how to help us work through this with our project, um, for with people who get our grants and do work on our behalf, why it's relevant and why it's needed. So there's always kind of more training and more updating as we work through it. Um, match two, Megan and I have developed a, a bigger match document and we're changing how we ask for our match from our grantees because if we have a project that goes over one year, we want to know what match was in 23, what match was in 24, um, just to have tighten it up a little bit. So that's something we've worked on. And then I'm working with grantees on to kind of change how they report that match back to us. So it's just sort of an internal process, but it makes Megan's life easier at the end of the year when she's reporting on our match um, to make sure we have enough. And lastly, um, Designer Jeans has been working with MDU. Um, MDU is actually employing a few people with disabilities in customized employment jobs, and they're looking to exp expand that work. And so they've been working with Designer Jeans to do a job fair um, with individuals with Down syndrome to practice interviewing for jobs, hearing about a job, doing a job fair, um, bringing in people um, with resumes, that kind of thing. So they've asked us to come in and partner as the council to talk about customized employment, um, be there and assist that day of the job fair, be there hope and help coach individuals with interview prep, that kind of thing. We are doing that in March. So we're going to kick that off um, like March, the week of March 4th with a meeting with MDU. We've been talking to them for a while. So really excited to kind of hash that all out as a partner to designer jeans. And we will keep you posted on how that goes. Um, and the Cross Disability Council has been meeting. I provided the slides that Jeremy um, walked through us with us at the council meeting um, from Tennessee of what they've included in their waivers. Um, so I did send that to Kevin and the Alvarez and Marcel group as they look at creating this new waiver for North Dakota. I did send it to Tina as well. Um, so they're all aware of this opportunity. Um, so I really think it's a huge advocacy opportunity for us to see if we can get um, AT as a standalone service and or the alter alternative staffing patterns for folks um, and helping providers with that workforce shortage. So that was sent to everybody too. And then um, Disability Awareness Day, I um, sent to our listserv the schedule for the all group for the meeting on the 14th and then Disability Awareness Day the 15th, but I'm going to attach in this message Together We Stand's vendor registration and agenda again. Um, it does say I'm doing the opening because they had asked me to do it to start, but now that the all meeting is paired up with this, we are actually going to have the all board members do the welcome and open instead. So it says me, but it's not going to be me. Um, so our all board is actually going to be doing that. So please come if you're available. And also UND is doing a Disability Awareness Day event in Grand Forks on the 18th of March. I will attach that to this too. Sorry that got very long on a short week, should have been a short update, but it's a long one. So have a good weekend.